So if you're playing in a band or getting together with other musicians to play, chances are you're going to be playing songs. Now as a guitar player, 90% of the time when we're playing songs, we're playing rhythm guitar. And if you don't have a good vocabulary of rhythm guitar ideas, playing rhythm guitar can get overly repetitive and sometimes even a little boring. But it doesn't have to be that way. In today's lesson, we're going to go over several ways you can liven up your rhythm guitar parts. <laughs> So when you're playing a song, there's generally going to be a melody that is the main focus of the music. And it's every musician's job to support that melody and play parts that fit the emotion of the song. But as guitar players, it's also our job to add some color and some excitement to the music. How many times have you heard a great rhythm guitar fill fit perfectly in between the vocals that really elevates that section of the music? That's one of my favorite things about guitar and something that all my favorite R&B and rock guitar players do incredibly well. So today we're gonna look at a basic R&B style backing track and we're gonna cover six different tools we can use for coming up with great rhythm guitar fills. So this backing track we're gonna play has just three chords. It's gonna start on A major, then go to B minor, and then finally F sharp minor. Now I've played a simple melody on the organ that's kind of taking the place of what would be the lead vocal. And what we're gonna focus on is how to play some guitar fills that weave in between that melody. So let's get into this first set of fills. So these fills are what I like to call butterfly fills, and this style came from early gospel and R&B guitar players, guys like Curtis Mayfield and Bobby Womack. And basically what we're going to be doing here is uh, these fast hammer-on pull-off licks, right? <laughs> And all these notes we're going to be pulling from are basically from the A major pentatonic scale. Since these chords, A, B minor, and F sharp minor are all in the key of A, we can basically just use um, this A major pentatonic scale, right? So, right, all of these notes. And we can do these little uh, hammer on and pull offs within the chord. So, Right there, I'm just hammering on from the fifth degree up to the sixth. And we can even have that high A note ringing out as we do it. And that's uh, hammering on from the ninth degree up to the major third. And having the fifth ringing out. Right, and then as we go to the B minor chord, we can do things like, um, you know, around that chord voicing or up here we can do, right, things like that. And then as we move to F sharp minor, we can do, right, or, Right, so these are just nice little embellishments we can add to our chord voicings 
and you'll discover these things based around the chords, right? So seeing this chord progression, this chord shape here, right? And then Right, and again, just using notes from that A major pentatonic scale and seeing those chord shapes and using these little hammer-on and pull-offs to embellish the chords. Okay, so for these fills, we're gonna use our triad shapes um, to create little fills within our rhythm part, right? So for this, we have to know our basic three string triad grouping. So for A major, we've got this, this, and this on the top three strings. Then we've got on the upper middle three strings, and then the lower middle three strings, right? So these types of shapes are really useful for coming up with little fills. And we can even just do things like, you know, alternating between two triads. There I went from an A major triad to an E major triad, right? Or we could do, you know, A major to D major. Right, seeing these little triads, we can create these great little rhythm parts. So, uh, right, so this is a really valuable thing to get under your fingers, these triad groupings. I've talked about that a lot. Um, but as you move them around, you know, you've got B minor you know, all these great little shapes for that. You've got F sharp minor, right? So, right, you can create these little rhythm motifs, these little themes, so. Right, so knowing these little three string triad groupings uh, comes in handy when you're trying to branch out and come up with different rhythm fills around the fretboard. So next up, we're gonna talk about sixths. This is uh, two notes separated by an interval of six degrees, right? So if we play A and we go up an A major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, F sharp is a sixth above A. And we can take this um, interval separation and move it up through the A major scale, right? So. And so we can use any of these double stop shapes um, over these chords because they're all diatonic to the key of A major. And this gives you that really classic kind of Steve Cropper Memphis soul sound, right?
right? And we can move them around through the chords, right? So. Right, so this is a really great device and you can take um, any scale really and harmonize it in six and use these intervals to move around through chords and if you understand what key the song is in and uh, how those chords relate to the key you can make some really nice lines using these type of double stop ideas So now we're going to talk about fourths. This is another really classic sound. Um, these double stops you hear a lot in this kind of R&B style of rhythm playing. Things like... Right? Right, so all this is is two notes separated by a fourth, right? If I play E here, one, two, three, four, A is four notes of the scale above, right? And I can slide that around. And over the A major chord, these two shapes here, right, moving from um, the ninth with the fifth on top, right, B with E on top, up to uh, C sharp with F sharp on top. That would be the third and the sixth, right? So you can play the same thing down here. That's a really nice sound. And then you also have the fifth and the root or E and A sliding up a whole step to uh, F sharp and B, which would be the sixth and the ninth. So. Right, those are really classic things you'll hear all the time. Right, things like that. You can uh, infuse that in your rhythm parts. Um, and then over the minor chords, over the B minor, um, I like to do kind of playing the... Uh, flat seven and the minor third above the chord, right? And then slide that up a whole step to what would be the root and the fourth. Right, so that's a uh, really common kind of use of fourth, so... Uh... Right, and again, we can infuse that in with other things we're playing and combine it along with these other concepts we're talking about. So let's talk about thirds. Basically what we're going to do 
is play two notes separated by a third interval, right? So if we play A here and we go up the scale, one, two, three, a third above would be the note C sharp. And we can take this and move it around the scale, right? We can move it on different string sets. Right, and we can get some really nice sounds, so. Right, so this is a really great um, way to come up with fills and kind of create little movements within the chord progression, create little counter melodies. Um, with these thirds and basically you can take any scale or any type of chord progression uh, a scale that fits over that chord progression and harmonize it in thirds and use that to create these little fills um, but yeah I really like to do it in this type of R&B thing because it just comes up with really great fills and you can move it all over the neck right um, And you create these little movements that fit within the chords and create some interesting little colors. So let's talk about some single note lines we can play over this chord progression. So all these three chords, A major, B minor, and F sharp minor are diatonic to the key of A major. So all the notes of our A major scale, or our A major pentatonic scale, work really nice over these chords. and. Um, you know, over the A major, it's going to have that classic major sound, but as we move to the B minor and the F sharp minor, it's going to have a little bit of a uh, different feel to it, particularly when we get to the F sharp minor. We play that A major pentatonic scale, now we're actually playing the notes of F sharp minor pentatonic. So it's really a, a nice way to play some simple little fills, right? right along in with those uh, sort of chanks on the back beat that's sort of implying the groove of the snare drum. Uh, we can add these little single note fills in there and you can even kind of do call and response with the melody or you can do little counter melodies, but just understanding um, what notes are gonna work in there, understanding the harmony, the chord progression, uh, what's going on there and what scale you can pull from. In this case, it would be A major or the A major pentatonic. And that's a really classic sound. You'll hear all types of different uses of that, sometimes doubling the bass line, um, sometimes, you know, call and response with the melody, or sometimes just playing these little kind of muted fills. <laughs> Right, things like that can uh, create a really nice texture and color to add to your rhythm playing. <laughs> 
All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope this lesson was useful to you. If you enjoyed it, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell icon to get notifications for future videos. And head over to my Patreon page um, if you're interested in getting the tabs and notation to any of my YouTube lessons or any of these backing tracks that I use to demonstrate stuff over. So that's a great place to go and support the channel. Uh, the link is down in the description along with all my other links to my various online courses. So until next time, take care and happy practicing.